Hi, I'm Matt Ketman with Time Magazine. I'm here today with Robert Kiyosaki. He is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which has been translated into more than 50 languages and is the number one personal finance book in the history of the world. Thank you for joining us today, Robert. Thank you. This question comes to us from A.J. Gupta from Grays Lake, Illinois. If you did not have the rich dad in your life, what would you be doing today? It's hard to say if I didn't have my rich dad because um, as a young kid, starting at probably about the age of five, six, seven, eight, nine, I really wanted to be rich. So I think number one is desire, you know, and then you naturally seek your role models and teachers. And in my lifetime, I've had multiple rich dads. You know, my rich dad was my best friend's father starting at the age of nine. And then today, I still seek mentors and wise men and wise women because that's how you get wiser, is by hanging out with smart people. And this one comes to us from Lagos, Nigeria. What made you write Conspiracy of the Rich? It goes back to why don't we have financial education in our schools? I mean, good question, right? Right. And how come the tax laws are different for different people? There's four things that make the most, 90% of the people poor. Number one is taxes. Two is debt, you know, the college loans, house loans, car payments, credit cards. Three is inflation. Everything goes up because taxes go up. It's not because things are more expensive, it's taxes. You know, if I have to pay more taxes, I have to pass that on. And the fourth thing that makes people poor is a retirement plan. That 401k or the IRA or their SIP. I don't need a retirement plan because all of my assets produce income. So my, like I have 1,400 apartments. Every month I get a check. Why do I need a retirement plan? You know, I have eight oil wells. Every month I get a check. Are there some people who should play it safe and do the, do the traditional route and just pick up a house, pay the mortgage? That's probably the most dangerous thing you can do today. What's happening in, in, the, in the Western world, in America, we're going to become a third world nation, rich and poor. That's it. The middle class is being wiped out. So the people in the middle, whoever's left in there, will be the ones paying the taxes, the debt, the inflation. You know what I mean? Right. The middle class is the one, they're the pack mule. Is there any way a government can help this, or ah. is, it really, is it really based on the individual to, to come up? You have to decide which side of the fence you're on, rich or poor. Yeah. Make up your mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Make up your mind. I made up my mind. It's rich dad, poor dad. I want to listen to my old man, a PhD. You know, the, the government will take care of me, you save your money, and as you're saving your money, the Federal Reserve is printing trillions of dollars. I mean, how <laughs> stupid can you be? And invest your money for the long term in a well-diversified portfolio of mutual funds, send it straight to Wall Street so that, so that they can pay their brokers $10 million a year bonuses. I mean, how stupid does a person have to be? I mean, wake up. Do they teach you that in, in college level economics or no? Hell no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's absolutely not. By Most, design. If you read Conspiracy of the Rich, 1903, John D. Rockefeller took over the financial education system by creating the General Education Board. And since then, the rich have controlled what is taught at schools. This question comes to us from, from Tokyo. Uh, Jay Siena asks, you always say that your poor dad forbade everyone to talk about money at the dinner table. Did you ever ask him why? And at your dinner table now, are people allowed to talk about money? That's all I talk about is about money. Tell me something money does not affect. Does money affect education? Absolutely. If you have money, you can go to the best schools. Look at George Bush. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> this one uh, comes from Laredo, Texas, from uh, Stephen San Ramon. When you and your wife were living out of your car, how did you remain so confident that you would be able to accumulate enough wealth to not only retire rich, but young as well? Well, confidence comes from discipline and training. I think one of the best things that happened for me was I, was, I kept flunking out of school. And I realized it wasn't school that was a problem, it was a lack of discipline. And so that's one of the reasons that I went to military school. The military trains you that there's four strengths. There's mental strength, emotional strength, physical strength, and spiritual strength. So that's what kind of kept me going. Is there a time to bail out on a project, though? I mean, when I don't, I don't that's not in my vocabulary. Yeah. Look, I have a, I have an unfair advantage. You know, I went to war, and at, at war, I'm alive because other guys died for me. When you see stuff like that, you know, how can I quit? Most guys are just wimps, pussies, cowards. They don't have it, so they should, they should get a job. 
Muhammad Zafar asks, is it possible for a person with no money and few resources to still make a fortune? How? Get off your butt. You have to get smart. You have to look for teachers. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Like I said, you know, if you want to be a mechanic, you go hang out with mechanics. You know, you want to be a school teacher, hang out with school teachers. Right. Right? right. It's really simple. I mean, and it takes determination, discipline, drive, correction. Can't quit.